Wonder, 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 wonder. Welcome back to the Senora Vibes podcast. This is season 13. Can you believe it? Season 13. It has been a long road to get here. We are joining the ethosphere of the podcast community because we have decided that we are not going away. We're still here and we're here to, to stay. play, to stay and to play and to slay. <laughs> and to Why not? All of it. Why not? So this um, podcast is geared towards you. We want to give you some interviews, some stories. We want to create a supportive community. We want to embrace everything that the Senora era is about. Yeah. And today I have <laughs> my favorite senora because guess what we are senoras and we embrace it we don't care whatever you say you could talk about us behind her back we do not care we are senoras and you can say oh those girls go to sleep at eight o'clock cool yeah. we're fine we're good with that yeah we're good with that right it, it, it took yeah. me a while to embrace we were, senora yeah, but i'm we, a senora. We, we were in vegas and we're in bed at nine o'clock yeah, and we're no shame i know no shame. So today I am bringing you guys my sister, somebody that I've been wanting to have on the podcast for a few years, and she just keeps saying no. This girl just keeps saying no, and finally <laughs> the I don't subjects know. were I don't like, know. Oh, I can't talk about that. I can't talk about that. No, but she. Now it's like okay, let it go. She You're has a reputation to uphold. I get it. I get it. I don't. I don't. I don't give a f about my reputation, but she does, and she's ha she has she has a reason why. She mm -hmm. has a reason why I don't, but she does. So I want to bring to you guys today for the opening for the premiere of season 13 of the podcast by the way we have been podcasting since march of 2020 literally when covid happened we started podcasting and it hasn't stopped but i did take a little bit of a break in march because i was just burned out my mom had passed away a few months before and i felt like i needed to just stop for a little bit and just I think, um, breathe. Mm -hmm. I think I needed to breathe because I will go, I will go hard and I will go hard all the way. But at some point you just decide that it's just, it's just too much. So welcome to the podcast, Thank to you. the Senora Vibes Thank podcast. You. My sister, Martha. Thank you. Excited <laughs> to be here. Why I'm did nervous you, about these oh, questions. Why did you, why did it take you so long to say yes, by the way? My listeners want to know. Because for some reason, I don't, I don't feel comfortable talking about a lot of subjects because it may be a little bit controversial. So I'm a little shy in those, uh, But you have aspects. opinions. I do have opinions, but I like to keep them to myself because yeah. I always have to stay neutral. Yeah. I always Is have to do that. Is it because you have a, a high level job or your, um, your position requires you to have it doesn't require Discretion. me. I just feel like I want to be neutral. I don't want people to know my business. Yeah. I want people to understand that yeah. I am whatever you want to be. You can be. I will be me. You know? <laughs> yeah. I don't really want to be on any side of anything at all. Understood. In Completely. front of people. But on yeah. my personal level, you know, you know where I stand on most of everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No. And I love that because, you know what? One thing about us is that we never, and I think this is. Part, this is going to be part of the subject matter that we're going to be talking about later is that we never talk about what's going on behind the scenes in our life. We always mm -hmm. just kind of like go with like whatever's mm -hmm. in the front. But and I think it's a legacy that was something that my mom kind of did. But we'll talk a little bit more okay. about that. But I just want to go back and talk a little bit about where we are right now. We are at the season 13. I had mm -hmm. a big. Well. I had an accident in July. It was a July. big accident. You July. <laughs> Tell them what happened. Tell them the truth. I know. And that's why you're here because you were there you when it happened. Um, so I want to say, like, how can I how can I frame this in a way that's like. <laughs> not, Just be super straight so up what ridiculous. happened. <laughs> it was not ridiculous. You were having the time of your life. And you were dancing, Quebradita, which is a signature of, we know to play that when you're around. And you were dancing with my niece, That's with so our true. niece, yeah. Lala, yeah. with Jade. And she fell on top of you. She did. She did. So this is the funny part, because I I don't go buck wild anywhere else, but your house. Your house, house is a place, place to like, like, I'm like having fun. Yes. I'm drinking. Especially by the pool. By the pool. 
even if it's not by the pool, yeah. girl, I could be in your kitchen true. and I'm like, true. I'm like hanging from something. True. You know, true. your poor house. Pobrecita, I feel sad for no, your my house because it's been my through something. Take it. It's, been, take it. <laughs> <laughs> it's been through, it's been through something, but like literally that day, I think I was just having fun. I was having a good time. Like always, right? Like I never let my guard down anywhere else, but like with people that I trust and that I love because I know they're going to hold it and they're going to be like, this is yeah. cool. This is fine. Uh, but you will not catch me acting like that anywhere else. Anyways, <laughs> I was dancing. So this is why, you know, you never want to like, um, this is like just a cautionary tale. Yes. Cautionary yes. tale. Yes. Warn people. <laughs> Let them know. From, Let them know. A four, from a 49-year-old woman, know what you're getting yourself into. At that time, I think that I was just like so like tired and and like just done with things. I'm like, I'm going to have fun. I'm going to have a good time. And so I'm dancing Quebradita, which is my favorite dance in the world, right? I love, you love me some Banda del Mexicano. Can you say anything about me that doesn't involve Banda del Mexicano? No, right? We all know that that's your favorite. The whole family knows. So we know to play that when you're around. <laughs> so, when, so when she plays it, she plays it on we're like, yeah, let's do Quebradita. Let's do some turns and Valle del Caballito. Here we go. Boom. <laughs> Uh, my 21-year-old niece falls on top of my leg and it pops. So, by the way, I felt it pop, Marta. I know. And doctors say you can hear the pop. I didn't hear the pop of the Ooh, ACL popping. It's the uh -huh. ACL. It's a ligament that connects your, your tissues, like your mm -hmm. knee tissues. Girl. <laughs> Pain is pain, I was, and I, I, I had never seen you in so much pain. And I kept telling you, cry it out, cry it out. You didn't want to cry. No, I didn't. It's cry. Like, why were you not crying? Like, I would have cried it out. And and it's like it's it's important for you to understand that you have to let that out. Yeah. Or else yeah. you're just gonna keep it in, and like even now, if you're feeling pain, you gotta let it out. I rarely cry, but if I cry for pain, me too. Like I have to let it out. Me too. Yeah. But I think that's part of the conversation we're going to have later about my mom's legacy. It's like mm -hmm. she was the queen of not whining. Do not be a whiner. Do not like show mm -hmm. people how hurt you're. Anyways, I'm on the floor. <laughs> so Russ is like, can you get up? I'm like, no, I can't even walk up. I can't even put like pressure on my knee because it's hurt so bad. So on the way home, he's like, uh, we go to the hospital or I could take you to the doctor tomorrow. And I was like, no, take me to the doctor tomorrow. I am not going to show up mm -hmm. at the ER looking mm -hmm. like this in a bikini, half drunk. Half. Like, okay. <laughs> okay, can we say three it's quarters? It's okay. <laughs> yeah, three, three quarters. It's be good. And the doctor's going to say, uh, <laughs> girl, you got yourself into this mess. Yeah. Pull it it's together. Like, fix, me. fix me. So... Go home the next day. Okay, let's go mm -hmm. see the ortho doctor. And he had a he had a client from years past that was an ortho doctor. And he grew up, you know, going to the shop with him. And he was like, this guy is good, Dr. Braley, at the Fondering Orthopedic Group. He was so good. He was like, I can see there's a problem. Let's get you an x-ray and let's get you an MRI. Mm -hmm. So not only was my ACL completely torn because mm -hmm. it will bust. It's like a rubber band that will just like bust my meniscus, which is a little tiny um, cartilage. It like ties everything mm -hmm. was busted. <laughs> so he was like, i um, glad you're here and uh, we need to get you in surgery. Yeah. You didn't know how bad it was. <laughs> I didn't huh? know. How bad no. it was. I'm like, fine, I'll be fine. I'll just, I'll just go walk back. Walk it off. And, and then you walk it walk. off. I'll be good. He's like, no, that's not going to happen for you. Do you want the lifestyle that you have? I said, yeah, I want the lifestyle that I have. He's like, you have to have surgery. Yeah. So that was where I was at that point. And so honestly, guys, cautionary tell. No bailes de caballito. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, that's a thing. forbidden dance. They said it was a And I think it's a it's running not. joke now for our family. It's, it's like, nobody like, I can't listen to that music anymore <laughs> without feeling pain for you. <laughs> I know. Because you know what? Yeah, it could be a trigger for me now. Yeah. Like, I listen to that music. I'm like, oh, my God. But that right brought now? you so much joy, Ali. That's that's the thing. We got to get back to that because that's that was your signature music and that was your signature dance. And you have to be that 
person again. They have to be. You know, but for somebody that's so guarded, because you're very guarded too, and I think this goes back to what mom taught us. It's like, for somebody that's so guarded, I was just like, nope, I'm fine, I'm good, this is going to be over, I'll be done with it. Mm-hmm. Girl, it's like a month and a half, and I'm not done with it. Yeah, It's bigger than it is. But at the same time, I think it brings me back to like, calm down. Yeah. Don't be so fucking crazy all the time. Mm-hmm. You don't have to mm-hmm. be so fucking crazy. Something had to put a stop to you. Something had to put a stop. Because you were always going and going and going and going. I mean, you you were always from one job to another job to another job to finding more things, to volunteering, to visiting, to just just too much. Like sometimes you're, it's the way our body just tells us. It's like, okay, time out. It's time for you to just chill. I know. And that's probably where it came in. No. And I think yeah. that I think the universe just sent like a big signal and said, mm-hmm. girl, mm-hmm. you need to slow down. Mm-hmm. You need to not go so hard and everything. But when I got my estrogen, when I got my progesterone after getting going through menopause, I felt like I was energetic and like ready to go and like full of life. Which is good. And I felt like I was 29 years old again. Not 49. <laughs> I'm what 46 now. I feel yeah, 25, but I don't want to jinx it. Like I don't want. To. We just had no, no, no. But you don't. You you don't go hard like that. You're very like. No, I am composed. You're yeah. very composed <laughs> and very in control of yourself and your in everything that yeah, you do. Luckily, yeah, which yeah. is good. I don't know if it's because you have a really high high profile job, mm. maybe. But I all think my life I've been, been that way. I think yeah. it's always been you. I've always been that yeah. person. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And that's what I'm going to have to describe in my next speech about how that, you know, created my life and, and everything. Just always trying to overachieve. It's exhausting. It's tiring. It's exhausting. But <laughs> I, think tiring. We're, I think we're overachievers because. But I don't want to overachieve anymore. Like, that's the thing. Like, okay, now I'm, now I'm on the tail end of that. I want to backpedal on that stuff. Now I want to chill. I, I want that for you. <laughs> Good. I told Russ this morning, I said, you know what? I want to be a type B person. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be type A anymore. It's exhausting. I'm tired. Mm-hmm. And he was like, I but girl, wish you this the, is the best, thing. but We it's both not married you. type A's. So <laughs> whenever know. we travel, yeah. whenever we do anything yeah. in the house, they manage everything. And that's the joy for me. Because I tell Leon exactly. all the time, like, I'm a leader at the office and mm-hmm. i'm coordinating events and doing these big events doing this and bringing this disaster all this stuff that i do and then whenever i i'm home i just want to let it go and he does he takes over he does all the bills exactly he just, like he just does that and i appreciate that so that's when i know i can just you know lay back and so. i like that you that you embrace that mm-hmm. i like that you embrace that because Thankfully, we both married men that can take over. Like, I am i haven't done anything. He's taken over everything. And, like, he found mm-hmm. my doctors. He found my insurance. Mm-hmm. He got my insurance to cover everything for me. But in the back of my mind, I cannot just sit around and let things happen. And that's a conversation we're going to have in a little bit okay. because that is something I want to come back to. But, yeah, I think señoras are, like, the comeback kids. Are we? You know how like Bill Clinton is a comeback kid? Like we're the comeback kids. Like we're the really the comeback kids. Why? Gen Xers. Gen X. Latinas. Gen X Latinas. Uh-huh. What do we have that, that helps us to come back? We have our background. We have our parents. Mm-hmm. Our mother was going through the worst possible things in her life. Mm-hmm. And she always came back from it. Mm-hmm. So I always think about her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She didn't complain. And sometimes you will text me and like, how are you feeling? And I'm like, I'm fine. I'm good. I'm great. Mm -hmm. And then you'll text me again. Like, how are you feeling? Like, you're like, tell me the truth. Yeah. Because most of the time I will tell everybody, I'm good. I'm fine. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Mm -hmm. I'm handling Mm -hmm. it. But you know, at some point we have a breakdown. We have a moment where we're like, Mm -hmm. yeah, I can't, I can't take this anymore. Yeah. And we, we're supposed to live in community. That's what our life is like. But how do we allow people to be our community if we think we're so self-sufficient, so independent, you know? 
it's almost like we have to do things for people without being asked because we don't know how to ask for that help. We don't. And that's don't very know. it's a very cultural thing to want to help somebody, but also it's a very cultural thing to oh, I got it. No, yo puedo. I got it. You know, we we like to do that, but sometimes at the end of the day, it's important to allow ourselves to be taken care of, to be helped. Yeah. Uh, I remember distinctly when I had my kids, you would bring in food. You would say, "Hey, I'm just dropping I'm dropping off dinner or yeah. and my mom was there, like mom was there to help clean up, help with the baby, give me a break. It's a community that we're supposed to have, but we don't know how to accept it a lot because we're very individualistic. Yeah. But we have sure. to understand that it's okay to so be supportive. It's okay to want to help. You know? I know, but I won't take help from anybody. Why? I just won't. I just won't. If it's not my husband or if it's you or my brothers or my dad, I'm like, I don't need it. I'm good. I'm fine. I don't know. I don't know why that is. But, like, at the end of the day, like, even my husband, Russ, will be like, call your sister. Talk mm -hmm. to your sister. Mm -hmm. Like, she will tell you how to get through it. But I'm not that person. I just can't be that person. Because you think you're burdening other people with your, I'm, with your number problems? Number one, burdening other people. Mm -hmm. And number two, I feel like I can handle it. I feel like I can handle it. I feel like I can deal and with it. And we can. But sometimes vocalizing it helps. So it that's, really does. That's part of the conversation that I want us to have because mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of us, and, I, and it's not just you and me, I think a lot of us are just like, I got this. And we do got this, but if we can and help we do. and make and it easier on our lives, why not? Yeah. <laughs> and then my kids are like, mom, you got it? I'm like, yeah, I got it, but I need you to like stick around. Yeah. And I'm like learning to stop that. And like this morning I told Russ, like, okay, I'm not going to be type A anymore. I'm type B and I'm just going to be like, fuck everything. I don't give a fuck about everything anymore. And just go with the flow. Whatever works for me, works for me. And he's like, good luck with that. Because mm -hmm. that's not you. Because I don't know you. <laughs> Because you don't know you. <laughs> I don't know me. So, yeah, senoras are the comeback kids. So let's talk a little bit about you and talk a little bit about where your mm -hmm. your background is and who you are. Um, Twelve years ago, you joined a really amazing, beautiful company that has, mm -hmm. like, taken you to another level. And you've taken that company as well to another level. Tell us a little bit about what you do with HEB. So uh, my career is, I do a lot of things, a lot of really great things. And one of the best things that I do, I think, is um, the disaster relief activations. Mm. So when people have, like there's tornadoes or hurricane You're or so anything, we that. can bring in our mobile kitchens. And my team is boots on the ground to finding the, the appropriate places to bring in those mobile kitchens, how many people we're going to feed. And those, those um, logistics and coordinations, are they take a long time. But it has to, I mean, it's, they're very tedious, but they have to be done in such a short time because you're dealing with people who are going through the worst of the worst. So uh, an example of that, like the tornadoes that we had recently at Derecho, we knew that there, there was right. this place in Spring Branch. And actually, you volunteered with me, which we appreciate that. We had a high density of Walker families. So they don't have cars or much of anything. Or if they do have cars, they're using it for work. And then the mom stays home with the kids. Yeah. And they lost so much in these um, apartment complexes in Spring Branch, Houston. And they were walkers. So we're like, okay, so we need to bring our mobile kitchen to them. Yeah. And that's the thing that HEB does where we have this team of full-time workers that are always looking at that. And so I'm for – I'm – representing the Houston side and our team, my team, our team, we're all we're all in sync and we're all finding the places to do it. Right. What are we gonna do? We're right. gonna do breakfast and lunch. We're gonna so it's a coordination and that's part of my job. I also do like parties for grand openings for new stores. Um I do a lot of the sponsorships that go around Houston, mm -hmm. manage a lot of the outreach that happens. Do we have an activation? Do we mm -hmm. have uh, employee volunteers. HB is very big about right. volunteering. So I coordinate big groups of volunteers that can make a big impact. Like one of example is like Santa Maria Hostel. We knew that they needed paint. They hadn't afforded paint in years. 
they needed a new system for um, for kids when they get off of school. This is Santa Maria Hostel is a place where uh, moms come with their kids while they're going through rehab, while they're going through detox, while they're going through a lot of things with the legal system, but they don't want to lose their kids. So Santa Maria Hostel allows them to keep their kids there. They didn't; these kids didn't have desks for their computers for their Chrome. Unbelievable. They didn't have, because they can't afford it. So they right. have to they have to be very mindful as how to use their budget. So H E B came in, we gave them desks. We bought all the desks. We brought our employees to help paint, to help put I mean, you name it, we did it. We even gave them like little mini H E Bs. We constructed them so the kids can have entertainment wow. while the parent is doing mm-hmm. whatever they need to do, counseling mm-hmm. or whatever they need to do. Mm-hmm. So it was it's things like that, that that I get to be involved with and I know I'm very lucky to have that opportunity to do it with such a a big company like H-E-B. It's a Texas company. It's an amazing company that really believes in giving back to the community. So that's part of my job. And I have the best team on the planet. I have the best boss. Yeah. And they believe in you. And they're like, okay, you want this? Like one time I had this grand opening and we had, it was a McGregor market. And it's, I was like, can I have a disappearing um, curtain? How much is that? And I told them, it's like, well, it's in the thousands. And they're like, Okay. What's a I disappearing just, curtain? So, so it's a big curtain. Like we were yeah. covering the, the, the store with this curtain it's inside. It's a real curtain? It's a real curtain. It's a okay. red curtain. And it was inside. And this came from my brain. And I was like, oh, what if we have everybody over here waiting to come see their store? And we'll make it like a big presentation. So I wanted I wanted a button that would disappear this, this curtain. So basically drop. That's what it did. Mm. And so I told my boss, I'm like, Hey, is this something that we we have a budget for? Where did that idea like, come it? from? My head, I don't know. It's oh, like I'm okay. I have a corrupt mind. And so I think about it and I'm like, okay, can we do that? Because I this was like gonna be a big deal. We had sat on that property for many, many years. There was a lot of drama behind that property. It was a great area. Yeah. It's really good to a lot of universities. And so I planned this grand opening and my bosses were like, do it. Go for it. Like, um, and then you're like starting to eat your your nails because you're like, oh, my God, what if it doesn't work out or whatever? Right, right. So, yes, this this curtain, you ba- basically press a button and it drops. And then we had confetti at the same time. And we had the, the Ocean of Soul band from TSU come in with a drum line because our store leader wanted to march down the aisles with this. So oh. I was like, OK, so we can make this happen. So you coordinate the, the band yeah. to come out at a certain time. It's like a producing a show, like I used to do it uh, in TV. So it's a production. And then right then and there, we had the band lead everybody out in through the aisles, and they were dancing. So it was a big party. So it's just very, oh my God, like, I get, I get to have those kinds of uh, creativities. I mean, of course, I have people that help us execute. Right. But sometimes it's like, man, is this far-fetched? Like, is this too far? Yeah. Like, have yeah, I gone yeah. too far? But... um. It's been encouraging. That's why I say I have the best bosses because they're like, okay, you want to do this? Do it. Go for it. How Trust amazing me. is to have a boss that can like be mm-hmm. like, you have an idea. Let's go with it. Like yes. how? It, because it's, uh, it's very amazing. rare. It's, it's very amazing. Rare. But I think I've earned their trust because I've, I've done what I've done with them. And I have these crazy ideas, but they work out so far. There has been some misses. I will say in my career, I've ha- nice. I have I have I like to tell people that I have <laughs> the record of the worst grand opening in the history of grand openings because my party sucked. Like nobody came to my party. What? I know it was crazy because everybody loves H E B. Everybody's coming wants to come to these parties. You cater it. You do the fun. I had maybe six people <laughs> when I was expecting like forty or fifty in the store. <gasps> it was embarrassing. And and you know you have a conversation yeah. with your boss and you're like. And she asks, well, where did this go wrong? What happened? Mm-hmm. And you sit down and you say, so I had my failures. And I learned from them. Because right after that failure, I had the McGregor Market opening, which was the disappearing curtain. And, and I had to go all out because I had to overcompensate for that that I did so wrong. So it's like a learning lesson. Ooh. Learning lesson. And I they know what suck. It is and to- you're embarrassed. Yeah. I was embarrassed. And it's a running joke now. Like, oh, is this going to be another one of those grand openings, Martha? It's like, no. How long ago was that? Because that should be forgotten. That was four (laughs) years ago. It was right before COVID. It was right before COVID. So I want people to understand that. But you're pretty confident in your planning skills. Abilities, yes. Abilities, yes. I am. My husband says, like, you and your sister can, like, run a 
freaking party with your hands behind your back your and like a blindfold. Yeah. Because you guys know what to do. So do you feel that? Do you feel mm -hmm. that confidence whenever you're planning something? I do. And I realize, too, when other people are planning things, like, oh, why, why didn't you just do that? And I don't like to feel that way. So I always, like, for my sister-in-laws, hey, you need me to plan something? I'm like, I got you. Like, this is what I do. So a lot of people need a checklist. It's for me. It's more like I have it already. You know what you need to do. And because I've done it forever. Like, remember when we were kids, yeah, I was yeah, yeah. planning fundraisers for the for oh, the yeah, folklorico the, group. The whole time, yeah. You were My the, cheerleading, I was yeah. the barbecue queen. Like, everything that I was doing, I was always a planner. And the key to that, really, honestly, is to do things way ahead of time. Because if you do, if you do everything last minute, there's, things are going to fall through the cracks. Even when I go places, so true. when I go to places and I'm an activate an event or something, I'm going to be there very, very early. If call time is not till one o'clock, I'm there 10 in the morning. Why? Because I feel like I have to over prepare. Yeah. And I have to make sure that all my ducks are in a row because just in case I miss something, I have time to correct, to it. correct it. And a lot of people want to do stuff last minute. And, and mm -hmm. it's like this, this energy that they get and that they have. And I just I, can, I don't thrive like that. No. But some people do. And that's okay. That's the way you, that's the way you work. That's what works for you. I have to do things way ahead of time. I agree. I'm the same way. And I think that's a, a legacy of our mom. Yeah. Because our mom. Was a master planner too. She was everything. a master planner. Yeah. She was a planner of all planners. Yeah. And you don't do anything last minute. Everything is planned ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And you get to places early. Because mm -hmm. you always want to look for whatever could go wrong. You can fix it, mm -hmm. right? And that takes me to the next conversation that I wanted to have. Like, what's the legacy that our mom left for us? She passed away last year in October. literally October 31st, Halloween. Halloween. Mm -hmm. Mom left so many legacies. And mom, I, I think, really gave me my self-esteem. Because it, she used to say things like, ¿Y tú por qué no? Like, why can't you do it? I'm like, that's true. So yeah. she always made me understand that if somebody else is doing it, why can't you do it? Yeah. I'm like, maybe I'm not that smart, mom. Like, well, mm -hmm. why? How do you know if you don't try? So it was always like that boost. And I appreciate that. I think it's a big deal. But there were some things like that I'm learning how to not do because it was for her, it was constant cleaning, constant doing something, doing something. productive. Yeah. You were productive. And all the I time. sometimes just want to sit on the couch. Play my mindless little game that my girls make fun of me because I'm like on level a hundred thousand now practically, and I just—it's a mindless game. There's no challenge. There's nothing. It's just matching three cards. And what do I do? I want to sit there and watch TV, <laughs> but know. then in my mind, I'm like seeing Leon is is washing dishes or is Sophia's cooking yeah. or Eliana's doing something. I'm like I have to participate. It's like no, I want to chill. And I've I've learned to do that because mom was always doing something so that's what i wanted to talk about because i think our legacy for us was like you have to be productive all the time all times yeah you you don't have naps there's no lazy moments like even if i even try to have a nap i have to talk myself into earning your nap yeah. earning my yeah. nap and now as we like, get older i just want to nap all I the did time this, i did this i did this i earned my nap because people people like laugh at the idea that like oh your mom was a housewife your mom was a stay-at-home mom my mom creative even though she was a stay-at-home mom even though she was a housewife she created workaholics out of us maybe you don't think you're a workaholic i feel like i'm a workaholic because mm -hmm. if i'm not doing work stuff i don't yeah. feel productive mm -hmm. i don't feel good about myself if i go to sleep and I'm like looking at my schedule on my phone and I'm like, what did you do to be productive today? You didn't do anything. I feel like shit. You no, know, I'm proud of myself if I don't do anything in one day. I want to get to that place. On. It's too much going on. And I, I want to get to that want. place. Even like when we were on vacation, I just got back from Cabo with Leon. We took naps every day. We're like, yeah, we're here to rest too. We did a bunch of tours. We, we had so much fun. But at the end of the day, we wanted to rest. And that was our goal. And we That's napped every day. And it perfect. was amazing. Two hours a day napping. It was amazing. And I think that that's one of the things that I'm learning to do. But before, when I first got married, I had to do something all the time. Yeah. And then weekends, we had to party. We had to do. 
And I'm like, I don't want to party. I want to be home. No, no, it's not even partying, Marta. It's just like doing something. That's I don't like want to do create. something. Yeah, I, know, I know. And when I see an open, like this Sunday, I have nothing on my calendar. I'm excited to just stay home. But then I see the piles of laundry, and I, that, that's got to be done. But whatever. No, but I, let's talk a little bit about the legacy of our mom. Like yeah. what she left for us and like what legacy she left for. Because for me, honestly, I don't feel like I'm worthy of the day ending if I wasn't productive. And mm -hmm. that's mom. Mm -hmm. Mom was like, you know, why are you taking a nap? Mm -hmm. What did you do to, to, to take that nap? Mm -hmm. Like, did you... Wash. But I think as we got did older, did you clean your room? Did you organize? Yeah. Did you cook? <laughs> like, but I, I think as she got older, she understood that we have careers and that we deserve our breaks. And she would encourage it after a while. Like she would come over to my house and she would just sit with me. ¿Qué está haciendo, Martita? O sea, aquí rascándome. I used to say that. And it's like, okay. And she would just sit next to me. Because she wanted the rest for me, too. She's like, okay, you're going too much. And how long, how long, I mean, what, what, what point in her life did she come to that? I think at the very tail end, maybe the last five years of her life. She was sick. Where she was sick. Yeah. She was sick, but she was still trying to be active and engaged, which I appreciate. But, I mean, knowing what I know about the disease that mom had, she had no energy. She had full fatigue. And she made an effort to yeah. be there for us and to sit with us and right. to come to the parties, knowing how miserable she felt. She still made that effort, which makes sense to me because that's her mom. It was her. It was her legacy, leaving it on to us. Now, for us, for me, I better, if, if Ileana needs me for a band thing, I'm going to get up and go. Mm -hmm. if, if Sophia needs me for a debate thing, I'm going to get up and go. Because mom made those efforts for us, too. Mm -hmm. Mom was never too busy for us. Never. And if my, my job interferes with something that's going on with the girls, my bosses are so understanding. Go do whatever you need to do. We got this. And that's important because I didn't have that at all times in my career. Right. And I always felt like I had to work 24-7. And especially in TV because everything is severe weather or disaster or something was going on in TV. And when you're the producer, you're... You're having to do the cut-ins. You're having right. to come do everything yourself. So I basically had a cot under my desk to sleep whenever I could because of election night. Oh, my God, election night was just crazy because you were following all the numbers and, and updating the numbers and updating the chirons, which are the, the little lower thirds, and all the things that you used to do in TV. And it was like active, active. Yeah. So whenever I got into a position where I was not doing TV, it was like, oh, my God, I don't know what to do with myself. Mm -hmm. And that's what mm -hmm. I spent seven years of my life in HCC. It was basically like the easiest job because mm -hmm. it was one project every three to four months. Mm -hmm. But because there was no budget to do the activations that you want to do. And then finally, I, I did have my daughters there and it was great. It was amazing because I had the flexibility. Right. And I was like, I need something else. Mm -hmm. I need a more active job i can do much more i can create bigger events i'm i've been that kid so what else do i love more in this life is food i was like mm -hmm. let me see you know i went grocery shopping i came home from grocery mm -hmm. shopping i told mm -hmm. him i said i love h-e-b it's so cool he's like you should work there i went online that same night and i saw that there was a position for doing what i wow. do shockingly and it was about to close <laughs> they needed somebody with news production me they needed somebody fully bilingual this is 2011? 2012. 2012. Okay. Well, I applied in 2011, which I applied I in November. I remember that. Yeah, I remember I that. I applied during the Thanksgiving break. It's so crazy. It's the Thanksgiving break I applied. Didn't hear much of anything. And then I was going through the process in like the Christmas time, which I was off from HCC for those two weeks. And um, it was a seven interview process to get into HEB world. And I'm glad you're talking about this because it's I always hard. get people that say, how did you get into these big companies it's it was one of the hardest interview processes easy. and you had mm -hmm. to take a psychology test i mean there was a lot of things that had to go in it but when you're in now that i'm in heb our culture is very different and you have to have the biggest heart in the world to work with us and you have to be that kind of person that's going to be what do you need i got you we we all jump in whenever there's disaster and our stores need us we're putting a product us in corporate world we're bagging groceries we're 
doing carts outside, yeah. like all of us. We're washing dishes and we have a restaurant inside. I mean, we're doing the nitty gritty mm-hmm. work. Mm-hmm. It, it's all hands on deck. And some people are like, well, that's not my job. Or that yeah. doesn't exist in HEB. Right. We all jump in. I've I've done shopping carts outside in the middle of hot summer. And I realized that I am weak. I suck at that. Mm-hmm. I That's not my thing. Mm-hmm. But will I hustle and try to do it? I will do it. And that's what everybody needs to understand is that that culture is very different. Mm-hmm. We have pictures of our employees coming in during Harvey with water up to their waist, but they're coming into work. They're yeah. asked to stay home, but they feel this, this um, love and this dedication to this company that they want to. They don't mind come coming in. in when they don't mind not, coming yeah. in. And luckily they get compensated well whenever it's disaster. But at the end of the day, they're being told, if you can't do this, please stay home. Your family's a priority. Mm-hmm. That's why we had to like literally bring in vans and vans of people from different from Corpus Christi, from San Antonio, for, yes, for, to come yes, and fill our yes. stores because our our employees were so affected. Right, right, right. But we still needed to be open for the community. The community needs us. We are their place for them to get their food. So, mm-hmm, But mm-hmm. back to the mom conversation, that's what mom taught us, is that we have to be able to be everything to everyone. And another thing that mom really did teach us is that take care of your husband. Mm-hmm. Like that was a, a top priority huge, for mom. Huge. It's like, did you give him food? I'm like, he's a grown yeah, man. Did you he's give a grown him man. Dinner, he can yeah. eat. Mm-hmm, it's like, mm-hmm. but if you're working late, what what's he gonna do to eat? I don't know. That's on him. Marta, cuidalo. Marta, take care. That's another big thing that mom was very passionate about is relationships. I'm glad you brought that up because that is a huge part of where she's so solid in 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 the way that I do things with my husband. Yeah. It was a top priority, and and to to the day of her death, she remember, Dad remembers that she was cooking, and she was trying to make sure that everything was okay with him. And when Mom was in the process of passing away, she would say like, "Don't leave him alone. Mm-hmm. Look after him." Mm-hmm. Like I'm like, "Mom, he's gonna be fine. Mm-hmm. He lives right behind us. We're gonna be great." But it was a very big deal for her that we a take care of ourselves, b take care of our loved ones. Another thing that mom did, remember, we tried to leave for college and she didn't let us because it was like, it was a, uh, we don't leave our houses until we're married. Mm-hmm. That was a big thing mm-hmm. for mom. Mm-hmm. But now, recently, she's like, Sofia quiere salir? Sofia wants to go here or there? or Let her go. I'm like, what happened? Did you evolve? What happened? She's like, we just can't keep her from the opportunities. I'm like, we had opportunities too. She goes, no, 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 but that's different. Mm-hmm. So, so your granddaughter, now she can fly, <laughs> but know. your daughters couldn't. <laughs> yeah. So she always want like every time she's like, how's Sophia? How's Ileana? Is, are they going to go to college? Are they going to do something? You know, are they going to fly? I'm like, they can fly if they want to. They don't want to. They don't have to. We're going to have their backs regardless. But that was mom. And mom always had our back. No matter what, like mom would never, ever, no ever say no what. to something. Yeah. And the day I realized that mom was about to pass away was mm-hmm. when it was grandparents day at um, Camila's school. And, you know, Camila was her best friend, oh, our little niece. Buddies. And they were inseparable. And mom could not get out of bed to go to grandparents day. And mom was crying. And, she was and so I was like, pain. mommy, it's OK. Mommy, it's OK. Camila will be fine. And luckily, uh, Basi and Kiara brought her over to see her mm-hmm. that night because mm-hmm. she felt so bad that she couldn't be there for Grandparents' Day. But that's when I knew it was about to take a turn. We had seen her decline for years, you and I. And um, that was the day that I was like, okay, this is time for us to brace for the worst. It's so And true. it did happen. It did. It was, within it weeks, was, it happened. It was. It was within weeks. But I think the... Mm. The, the learning lesson in all of this is the fact that she taught us to keep going when we didn't want to keep going because mm-hmm. that was her. Like she was mm-hmm. sick for so long and she just kept moving it and moving and going and doing and, and trying things out. And the other thing about her was like, and this is hard for me because I, I just miss her so much, is that... When you're feeling at your lowest, yeah, maybe you don't seek out everybody's attention, but you do gravitate to the people that love you and like Mm -hmm. you listen to them and you say, yeah, you're right. I need to listen to you. I need to 
do what you say. Because at the end of the day, Marta, even like if I'm sick or if I'm struggling, I'm not listening to anybody but like my husband. Mm-hmm. Like, because I know he has mm-hmm. my best interest in you or my brothers. But that was her thing. Like, she was like, surround yourself by the people that love mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. and like follow and show others it. and show it. And that's it. That's show, show the it. love. And show the love. I know a lot of people want to, oh, we don't hug, we don't kiss. So we're our huggers no, and we're kissers. Not. And yeah. yeah. All the time, we're always with dad and every opportunity that we have to tell each other that we love each other, you know? Lucky me, I get to have my my little little brother as my neighbor. Yeah. This morning, I just pop in there. It's the twins' birthday. I pop in there. They're wearing the cutest little dresses, and they're like, "It's birthday!" It's bir-. and I'm just like, "How lucky am I?" The other and I told Basi, I, lo- "I love you." The other thing is, like, I'm so glad that we told her that we loved her and we thanked yeah. her for her for her upbringing. We yeah. thanked her for her motherhood, for the mm-hmm. way she mothered us. That was a that was a great opportunity that we had that not many people have. Mm-hmm. Not a lot of people to have. tell their parents that they need them and they love them and that that we're thankful for what they did for us. And and if you noticed, our our kids, the grandkids, did the same thing. They did with abuela. They did the same thing without being told to do so. That says a lot about mom because mom was that person that was always good to people, never said no to never. any favors. I could call mom to in the morning and say, Mommy, I want some chile rellenos in the evening. Do you think you could? Yes. She would. She there was no it. question. She would do it. Yeah. To this day, I can call dad. I said, Dad, I feel like eating tacos, de, de carnitas, de tripas, whatever. Okay. A que horas vienes? What time are you getting here? It's That's the thing that, and that's what I want to be as a parent. Like, yes. Our, our kids yes. need to know that they can come home to us anytime, mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. we will be, we will have their back 100%. Yeah. And the beautiful thing about our family is that my girls know that their tias got their back. Ride or die. All the time. All the time. My, my brother, same thing. My husband has become a, a brother to my brothers. Of course, yeah. Your husband has. Yes. It's like a unity that is remarkable, I think. And that's mom's legacy because she oh. She she remember she never let us fight. Never. Never let us fight. Hey, no hables así. Don't talk like that. Or don't say that to your sister. No, los and hermanos like, oh siempre God. se quieren. She would say yes. that all the time. And I think that's what made us so close because she didn't allow us to disrespect each other or to yell at each other or to or to and then Poppy would husbands. just laugh at. Us. Remember yeah. when we had a fight upstairs? Mm-hmm. We were in the north side house and we had a fight and Poppy was like laughing at us like why are y'all why are y'all fighting? That was so stupid. That was so silly. And then we're like, oh, my God, it's so stupid. It is. It is. It's so stupid. It's and so, so we were like, we were never allowed to fight or dog each other <laughs> out. And I think that was crucial. Mom's legacy, too, is that she made us respect each other at all times. All the time. Because dad would always say, too, van a salir mal. You guys are going to end up in a fight. Mm-hmm. Don't talk mm-hmm. to each other like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. We're better than that. Mm-hmm. And it's true. Mm-hmm. Like, I could never imagine disrespecting Basi. Disrespecting pep, calling them names. Like there's never that's just not I see other brothers and sisters that do that to each other. And I'm like, oh my God, like I can't. It no. would it would break me no. because no. mom would be so mad. Yeah. You're absolutely correct. That's the legacy. It was her legacy. She always said, respect your husband, respect your brothers, respect your sisters. You don't always agree. We don't always agree. Yeah. But respect their point of view. And move beyond it because not only did she have that mentality, but because she grew up with brothers and sisters that were so nasty and ugly to her. So she had that. And Papi had the same thing. He had brothers and sisters who were so ugly and nasty to him. So for them, it was crucial that their kids so were going to break that always going to be loving, mm-hmm. giving, at respectful at all times. Yeah, and it, it I mean, we got on each other's nerves. Don't get us wrong. We did and, fight. We did argue, but I it wasn't. Lo- and I love that at the end of the day, when she was dying and she was in her last, her last things, we thanked her for being the person that she was, and she raised us to be who we were. And don't you think it was a beautiful thing that when mommy was dying, through the process of her being at the hospital, our brother stepped in. Yeah, for a sure. lot of a lot of oh the oh the boys they don't pay attention to their moms. It's, my brothers were 100% on board, and they were spending the night in the hospital with mom. They were taking care of dad. 
we were we all had a coordinated schedule. Who, who was going to be there with mom? You know, and our brother stepped in. Our sister in law stepped yeah. in. Yeah, it, it was wasn't. A a, it, it wasn't was a, a question. Yeah. It just organically works. Like I never had to ask. Hey, Gata, can you do this? Never. Hey, she would volunteer. Like, hey, I got this. We had our schedule. It was like, okay, I can do this day. I'm. 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 Or or Ali take a break. I'll take it. Or whenever she had an appointment, we had to make sure that one of us was yeah. there because we were the ones that knew Absolutely. and understood Absolutely. her medical needs. So, but mommy and papi knew what they had and they knew how to structure it for the future yeah that's so smart for them so smart and papi will always say mom your mommy was the smartest in the whole wide world mm -hmm. but he was a smart person too because he said yes i agree with you let's raise our bo our boys and our girls to be this way and at the end of the day we were not raised in the church We mm -hmm. were not raised with religion. Mm -hmm. We were we were raised to be compassionate, good people, mm -hmm. and that's the thing that I and that's a theme that I always bring out in my podcast. It's yeah. like you don't have to be a part of a church. You don't have to be a part of Catholicism, Protestant bullshit. None of that. You get that if people want to be a part basic of that, that's need good. in people. If they want to do that, that's good. It's But just good. Don't force it onto other people. Ab absolutely, and that's how I feel about. And that's our that. parents. And our I said to mommy that. I said, mommy, thank people. you for not forcing us to go to mm -hmm. church mm -hmm. and not forcing us to believe in something. And just being compassionate and loving. Mm -hmm. And that is the ultimate thing at the end of the day. Yeah, you're That's right. what I love about her. <laughs>